Right, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to crack SMB protocol or basically how to hack into Windows, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use crack map exec, right? And you're going to see me basically use compiler tools. So if you just specify crack map exec, right? And the cool thing about crack map exec is actually it supports other protocols. So like protocols like FTP, SSH, and um, Windows Remote Management, and RDP, and some other ones. But in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on SMB. So I'm going to specify the pass, uh, sorry, the IP, the, the IP address. So for me, it's just uh, just my local IP address, and I'm going to specify a word list here um, and passwords, right? So what I've got here is just two word lists that I've made, so I don't have to sit here for 15 years cracking the login credentials, right? So I'm just going to let this run. I'm also going to show you uh, how to crack like the password on its own. And as you can see, it basically didn't really... I didn't have to wait long, right, for the password to get cracked. So as you can see, the password is, or the credentials are Killkit and Administrator. Now, if you wanted to crack the password on its own, you would just have to replace the, the actual word list with the username, so Killkit and the passwords. And as you can see, um, we have managed to crack the basically just the password on its own with the username. Now, obviously, you can reverse this. You can just put the, the password, sorry, the password all looking for the username. Let's actually try this. Um, right, let's just say user.txt and let's put the password um, administrator and as you can see it's going to work both ways right so as you can see we have cracked the password for killkit right and in a second i'm also going to show you how to enumerate other users but for that you need valid credentials now also if you want to verify that the actual credentials are working right for example if you find find some credentials what you can do is you can use netexec which is basically the exact same tool as crackpap exec it's just um, this one's actually supported and it's updated. So if you just use, I'm going to use Cookit and I'm going to specify the password. And it should take a second. As you can see, it says plus, which means we have valid credentials for the protocol. Now, for example, this is also useful if you want to see if other protocols are supported with the same credentials, right? So if I'm going to specify, like, for example, in RM, right? And as you can see, it says minus, which means either it's not implemented, the Windows Remote Management, or the credentials are not working. Okay, now, if you have found valid credentials or you haven't found valid credentials, let me show you how to check for anonymous access. So, uh, for this basically purpose, we're going to use SMB map, right? Which is just basically a, an enumerating tool for SMB. So, if you just specify the IP address with hy hyphen H, which just stands for host. Now, here, what you're going to need to do is specify um, basically guest in the quotation marks. And with no password and the quotation marks as well. Now, you only need to do this for the basically anonymous access, but if you have valid credentials, you don't. I'll show you how to do this in a second. So as you can see, there's no, it didn't actually show us the shares, which means there's no anonymous access. So let's actually use our valid credentials. So it will be, for me, it will be cool kid, and the password is administrator. Now you can actually do it in the quotation marks as well if you really want to, but you don't have to, right? So as you can see, we have enumerated the shares. Now, and all four of those, so the A dollar to IPC are all default on SMB. However, there is one called secret, right? And you can actually see the permissions as well. So it says read and write. Now, what we can do is we can actually log in to the actual share and see what's inside and download the file, right? So for to do this, we need to use the SMB client, which is also installed by default on Kali. Right, so all we need to do is just use SMB client. So if you just type in SMB client, now SMB client is a bit difficult to really understand how it works, like but the first time you use it, but it's actually simple. So we just need to put forward forward slash, right? This is the default, you need to do this. 192.168.88.136 and the share. So in this case, the share is secret. So I'm going to put the share and now the username, right? Username is important because just like SSH, you need the actual username and the valid credentials. So um, cool kid and the password. Now the password, um, you can actually, you don't need to supply the password in the command line. You can do it after you send the request and the, basically the server is going to ask for the password. So I'm just going to put administrator. Right, and as you can see, just like FTP or like the Linux command line, you can use LS, you can use... Now, the um, one LS. cool thing I really love is enumerating users. Once you actually get valid credentials, what you can do is you can enumerate users very, very simply without any without any hassle, actually. So if you use net, net exec SMB and they use the basically IP address, right? 
So make sure you just use this one. And if you use a flag called RID brute, what this will do is we'll basically enumerate all the users or show you all the users that are available in the SMB, right? So as you can see, we have first user, which is 1000 and it says kill kit. Now, the thing about the first user is usually he's the usually administrator, right? It matters about the circumstances. I'm not saying this is 100% every single time, but usually like at home, if your first user is usually your administrative user, same with websites. If you get access to like ID zero or ID one, that is usually administrator. So it is worth like noting what the first user is because then that can tell you which user to attack, right? I'm not saying obviously this is 100% true for every single circumstance, but usually the first user is administrator so this can tell us right okay we should attack cool kid because he's the administrator now just for the end of the video what i wanted to do is i want to show you modules now modules are very very fun but they're not working properly or i have some problems and it's just not working properly i'm not exactly sure but i have found one that works so if you type in nxc which is just the net exec button short and if you type in smb with uh, capital L. Right? What this will do is we'll show you all the modules. As you can see, all the modules, like the font modules, are like RDP, UAC, and we have like Firefox, so it dumps all credentials from Firefox, and much more, right? But what we can do is we can actually use one, right? So if I uh, basically net exec SMB IP address username and M, not L, right? You need to specify M and enumeration AV, which just stands for enumerating antivirus. And if I run this, what is that actually gonna show me? It will show me that Windows Defender is actually installed, as you can see, right? And to be honest, that'll be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I'll try to answer as soon as possible. And if you'd like to learn ethical hacking through my course, make sure to check the comments down below and there's a link right there for you. And peace.